the Cima Coppi, the title given to the highest point of the Giro d'Italia. For any rider to be the first to reach the Cima Coppi is a great accomplishment. It was introduced in 1965 to honor five-time pink jersey winner Fausto Coppi and his legacy to Italian cycling. A chance to remember one of the sport's great icons. Fausto Fausto was a shy, elegant man. He was physically gifted with a slender figure. And he had a very slow pulse rate that gave him an advantage over other riders who had faster beating hearts. Despite this, Fausto trained every day, cycling 170, 180 kilometers together with his domestiques. Si allenava tutti i giorni percorrendo 170-180 km insieme ai suoi. But during winter, when it wasn't possible to ride on the roads, he trained on wooden rollers in his home. Non si poteva andare lungo la strada, lungo le, le come si dice, le strade, le lunghe percorrenze. Si allenava sui rulli di legno qui a casa. He woke up early in the morning to ride his bicycle and go towards the coast or the mountain, passing by Genova or using difficult roads, all to be prepared for the competition the following Sunday. Aside from his commitment and professionalism to training and racing, it was his style that captured the hearts of the fans. Con uno stile a wonderful style on the bicycle. You could fall in love with that style at first sight. Fausto was the greatest of all. Also, considering the state of the roads back in those times, as well as the food he ate, only natural, without the elaborate supplements of today, let alone the drugs, which didn't even exist. At that time, he never used such substances. He was strong because he was just a phenomenal man. Tragically, in the winter of 1959, Fausto Coppi returned from a race in Burkina Faso with a fever that would ultimately cost him his life. Once back at his home, he started feeling feverish with the first symptoms of malaria that later took his life. Unfortunately, nobody understood in time that he had malaria. I think he should have been taken to hospital immediately and not home. Clinical tests should have been carried out to examine his blood, but this didn't happen, unfortunately. Fausto died eight days later. He died of a fever, and I was told that he suffered a great deal. Here in Castellania, about 50,000 people came to his funeral. We had other great champions like Felice Giamonde, Francesco Moza, and other excellent sportsmen. But in my opinion, they never reached the level of Fausto. A mio giudizio, non sono da paragonabili a Fausto.